good afternoon, everyone. And um, uh, I'm very uh, privileged to be here today to talk to you about Microsoft and, uh, and what we're doing in, with open source solutions and uh, why is there a big change at Microsoft with us uh, addressing open source so heavily. And so I'm hoping in the next few minutes I can explain that to you and give you some background as to why this makes such a great business sense for us at Microsoft. Uh, you would have recently heard about, uh, and this morning you also saw a short video uh, about our partnership with Red Hat, and I'll be talking about that in a little while as well. Uh, so to start off, it really the root cause of everything that we're doing around open source is uh, it's all about customers. At Microsoft, we're uh, moving from being a traditional uh, software business that provides on-premise software for customers to uh, deploy in their premises to being a cloud vendor. We provide cloud services to customers. And that is a change of business model that has required a change in the way we look at what we provision on that cloud. We know that customers, uh, uh, the, the infrastructure is a function of time. And they have, over a period of time, uh, implemented many different technologies, Microsoft technology, other proprietary technologies, and open source technologies. And if we want to be their cloud vendor of choice to provide them with an enterprise-grade cloud, we need to provide them with a cloud that runs all forms of technology, uh, everything that you see on this slide and much more. And so that's what's changed our approach at Microsoft. Uh, we'd like to be the premium cloud vendor for our customers, and therefore we should be able to support and run and uh, manage all of their technologies, not, this, not just the traditional Microsoft technologies. And so why do we think we're able to do this? What are we doing that makes uh, uh, us unique? How can we look at, uh, what can we talk to our customers about when you think uh, about our competitors, our other cloud competitors, and why would we be unique? Well. We have a very, very open approach, and I'd like to summarize it for you now and then show you a few key points about that. Number one, we've always been about empowering customers at Microsoft. From the very first day we started our company uh, at Microsoft, we said that uh, our tagline was at Microsoft, making it easier. It was all about making things easier for, com for customers uh, in the early days when we produced products like Windows and Office. And then we moved on, and as we created a larger server-based business, our, our marketing and our tagline changed to Microsoft realizing potential, helping customers realize potential. And today, our mission at Microsoft is all about empowering customers. And so we've always been about empowering customers. Customers have been the center of what our mission is, unlike our competitors who, uh, in the cloud world who you know, have search businesses or run online shopping environments, e-commerce e environments, etc. We've always been about empowering customers. It's the central thing we do. And so um, at Microsoft, we provide, we realize in the enterprise space, we'll provide customers with the freedom to choose to run any technology on our cloud platform, whether that's Linux or open source based technologies, Microsoft technologies, and our competitive technologies. Uh, so a freedom to choose. And then also a freedom to change. Anything we do in the open source world and any technology that we invest in, you can move off Azure back onto on-premises, which is not the same as what some of our cloud competitors do. We also, at Microsoft, have a deep investment into building on-premise cloud uh, environments. So you can move onto, into a cloud and then off Microsoft Cloud onto on-premise. And a little bit later, I'll show you a tool that helps you do that and move to your workloads to our competitor uh, platforms as well. We believe we provide an optimum value between price, performance, security, privacy between the cloud and, uh, and on-premise. And lastly, our investment into uh, local economies around the world in every single country that we operate in. Uh, we've invested billions of dollars into uh, the ecosystem. So we feel we're all about empowering uh, customers, empowering the ecosystems, and we do that by providing choice. On Azure, we, uh, and not just on Azure, in all of our technologies, we provide uh, Microsoft technologies on a broad range of platforms. On Azure, we have deep investments into all distributions of Linux, uh, but we're also putting traditional Microsoft software on, uh, on uh, iOS environments, in uh, Android environments. You've seen us start distributing uh, a ton of software through all those other uh, stores as well. And so, and the point is, we want to be able to help customers do whatever they want to do, regardless of the platform. Uh, we, we participate in many open standards bodies, 150 different authorities that we help fund. Uh, and everything we do 
uh, at Microsoft in our products, in our own products, is about enabling inter interoperability with the ecosystem. As a matter of fact, we've been hiring people left, right, and center around the company to come into Microsoft's engineering business and help us work with the open source ecosystem. We've hired many, many uh, uh, architects from around the world, open source architects. Even the president of the Apache Foundation is now a full-time employee at Microsoft. We have deep, deep engagement uh, in the open source ecosystem. Uh, we have uh, um, Microsoft engineers contribute on a daily basis to over 2,000 different open source uh, projects. As a matter of fact, we have 1,671 repos currently that we host. Uh, Microsoft on GitHub, uh, and uh, we have this tool that all of our engineers use to log and uh, all the code that they contribute to these uh, solutions, and yesterday, we do a daily uh, count of this, yesterday we, um, uh, Microsoft engineers uh, uh, posted for, uh, uh, 45,000 lines of code just in one day to these projects. Um, there's a significant amount we, of work we do across all of Microsoft's engineering uh, products to uh, contribute to open source technologies, to use open source technologies into our products uh, wherever appropriate, and to help move the, uh, the ecosystem forward. Um, and what that ends up with is a, uh, we can provide customers with a cloud environment that we feel is the most secure and most trusted. It's all about building trust, and I, I see many of our speakers this morning have been talking about trust. It's about building trust in the cloud, and we do that through a number of uh, key uh, areas, uh, obviously providing the right level of security across uh, everything we do. Uh, but it's also about uh, talking about privacy and where your data is, giving you the option to use, to keep your data where you want to be able to keep it, and then having stringent policies that show when and where your data is accessed by anybody at Microsoft, if it is ever accessed. We're also leaders in the cloud world at uh, holding people responsible for what we can, what they should and shouldn't be able to do in the cloud with data. Uh, a very interesting report that you should look for and read is called the Microsoft Law Enforcement Request Report. And we've sued multiple governments around the world who've asked us for data from uh, inside our, uh, our data centers from around the world. And we've taken many of them to court and won every battle. Uh, to prevent anybody from looking at customer data uh, around the world um, illegally. And so we publish every request that a government gives us from anywhere in the world, and then we categorize it with whether it's legal, uh, what part of it is legal, and uh, if we ever have to provide information. And on a, on a kind of a, a six-monthly basis, we get maybe 60,000, 70,000 requests, and many times there is a zero uh, request that we actually comply with because they're just not legal. Uh, under any legal jurisdiction. And so go and have a look at that report. It's very interesting to see the kinds of things that we do to ensure your privacy of your data uh, in our data centers around the world and the policies that we have to give you every tool you need and completely transparent to, man to maintain your, um, your privacy and security of your data. So we feel that by empowering our customers with our core mission through enabling the choice that we provide on Azure uh, and then our commitment to privacy and security and transparency, gives uh, customers the best place to go and run their, their, their workloads. And what it ends up with is a, uh, is a very open solution in the cloud uh, across infrastructure, databases, application frameworks, applications themselves, even up all the way through to a management stack and clients. Uh, at Microsoft, we can give customers a cloud experience that is, uh, that is unrivaled in its scope and its, um, and its uh, uh, openness. But our competitors do that too. What makes Microsoft's cloud different? Well, there's three key things here that I'd like to point out. Number one, um, firstly, the partnership we have with many open source uh, uh, companies and vendors, but specifically with Red Hat. Uh, we have a very, very deep relationship with Red Hat, uh, which we recently announced, and it goes way beyond simply provisioning Red Hat products on Microsoft Azure. Uh, we're joining their, their cloud program that they've had for a, for a while. And clearly, we'll also provide uh, images and uh, Red Hat solutions on Azure, uh, both from a Linux point of view, but also uh, a lot of the other products. Uh, in turn, um, uh, Red Hat will also host and make sure that Windows 
runs on all of the Red Hat cloud platforms like their uh, OpenStack platform and also managed by their virtualization uh, and management tools. So there's a cross uh, uh, engineering work that we do to make sure that each other's products run very well on each other's cloud platforms. But that's just the start. We're also, uh, because we're both enterprise focused customer, uh, organizations and we're focused on our enterprise customers, we're providing joint support and not only just joint support, but also co-locating support uh, engineers into a single building. Happens to be on the Microsoft campus in building 33. And uh, so we have Microsoft Engi Azure engineers and cloud engineers, Red Hat engineers. And so no matter where you get your, uh, where your issue is, arises, you can uh, log your issue. And between Microsoft and Red Hat, you'll always be solved. Your issue will always be solved, whether that's on the cloud or whether it's on premise on any one of the Microsoft or Red Hat environments. And that is unique. There's no other cloud provider that provides that level of, of uh, depth of integrated support uh, with Red Hat. And we're also integrating our management tooling. So if uh, customers, if we have a big Red Hat customer that uses uh, Red Hat management tools, like uh, Cloud Forms, for example, um, then you should be able to use Cloud Forms to manage your Red Hat uh, environment, whether it's on Azure, whether it is running on premise or on a Red Hat OpenStack environment. Uh, you should continue to be able to use Cloud Forms. And at Microsoft, we want to make that possible. Um, Similarly, if there's a, a customer that uses any of the Microsoft management tools, then we'll extend that into managing uh, Red Hat solutions, both and Linux solutions, both on Azure, but also in Red Hat environments. So it's all about giving customers uh, uh, the opportunity to use whatever tools they want to use to manage this environment. And then lastly, and very strategically, uh, you know, a while ago we took the Microsoft.NET framework, our application framework, and we open sourced the entire framework. Now, Red Hat is adopting that. Uh, we will use Red Hat servers as the platform for all of our contributions into the, the Linux version of .NET, but Red Hat will also adopt that and make it there. Uh, a, a premium uh, environment on Red Hat solutions, on Red Hat environments. What that means at the end of the day is that customers that have applications written in .NET will have a much broader range of platforms to run those applications on. And for enterprise customers, that's critical. So there are three things that make a real difference between ourselves and our competitors. One, hyperscale. Um, if you just look at the Microsoft Cloud environment, we have uh, data centers around the world. Uh, we have uh, 24 what we call Azure regions, which cover uh, the entire world, more than AWS and Google combined, and we're announcing these on a regular basis. Secondly, hybrid. Uh, we've uh, announced and are bringing out a number of technologies that allow customers to, uh, specifically one called Azure Stack, it allows customers to take the Azure cloud environment and run it on premises completely owned by themselves. And it gives you all the, plat all the PaaS and the uh, IIS features that you would want on a public cloud, but running on premises. And that's completely integrated. So it's the same uh, look and feel as Azure public cloud, but on premises. Um, we also uh, announced and have launched a tool called the Microsoft Operations Management Suite which uh, uh, allows you to look at workloads both on Azure, on your local data center, whether that's in VMware or Hyper-V or on an OpenStack environment, or on AWS and move workloads between all of those environments. Why are we doing that? Because we know customers use multiple environments and we need to give them the tools to manage multiple clouds. And so that's a core focus of what we do uh, at Microsoft in the cloud. And then lastly, enterprise grade. And I needn't tell you that there are tons, many, many customers that are using Microsoft Cloud and Microsoft open, uh, open source solutions on Microsoft Cloud uh, today. As a matter of fact, one in four virtual machines on Azure today already runs uh, uh, Linux or open source solutions. And that's growing rapidly, rapidly. And so we feel that uh, those three environments make our open solution completely unique. Lastly, you will see that we have hundreds uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, open source, Linux and open source uh, positions available. If you go to uh, Microsoft.com open source, uh, you'll be taken through to a link that shows you all the positions we're hiring around the world at Microsoft for open source technologists and cloud architects. And it's strange. I've been at Microsoft 23 years, and I'm the first guy to have the title Vice President of Open Source Sales and Marketing and that the hottest jobs that we're hiring for at Microsoft today, you know, thousands of roles around the world, 
are open source and Linux based roles at Microsoft. So it just shows you how the world has changed and how we're embracing this. And so if you know of people that are looking for a great career, there's a fantastic place to go to get a great career building Linux solutions in the cloud for customers. And with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your time. And if anybody's got any more questions, we'll be around here later today. And I'm very happy to talk to you about Microsoft and what we're doing with open source. Thank you very much.